Ash. There's a star on XFM 104.9, five past one. That means it must be well in. <laughs> five minutes in to the Ricky Gervais show. With Steve Merchant. Yeah, he's here as well. Yep. Well, we've got some great tunes lined up, haven't have we? we? We've got Eminem, have we've we? got, we've got Coldplay, Oasis, we've got Brilliant. De La Soul, Chemical Brothers, Dr. Dre, Garbage, R.E.M., The Manix, we've got sure. Muse, we got Feeder, yeah. we've got some classic I mean, you said all those names, Rick, but the chances of us actually playing all of those are quite slim. We might not get to them if we talk too much. And obviously we'll obviously drop a couple of those to play our own tracks as well. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. they are own tracks. Yeah. You know. Well. Well. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get into that now. Right. <sighs> Here's Eminem. Eminem, the real Slim Shady. Now, even though that sort of record is, is, you know, relatively recent, and yeah. it's, you know, it's quite hardcore, what's going on about, you know, subject matter that is, that is adult, mm, really. Certainly. And it's quite aggressive and it's cool and it, but he still managed to make it sound like a novelty record. It is, yeah. So, I mean, it's like a little thing. I know that's the intention, and that's good. But yeah. I mean, I think, uh, I think it's nice that he's got a nice little tune. It could be like, um, a little cartoon figure. Here comes Flumpy McMump. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do, yeah. Do, 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 but the only is, there is, isn't there like a video you can get now which is a cartoon Slim Shady, The Adventures of Slim Shady? Really? Because I know there was The Adventures of MC Hammer, the cartoon animated series, which sadly I never got to see. And New Kids on the Block, I think. The I cartoon think. went a bit mad and started, set, you know, spending a lot yeah, of exactly, money. Yeah, exactly. You know, MC Hammer now apparently is like, he tours on the kind of religious music scene. Does he? Yeah, he's gone sort well, of he was always, religion. wasn't he always at a preach or something, or just started in gospel or something? Was he? Yeah, I think so. Cause he used to, yeah. I don't know, I mean, I just assumed he was quite, he was from off the streets. He used to keep a lot of Bibles in his big trousers. <laughs> yeah. So he could go around giving it to poor people. Yeah. Well, apart from the great music we've got lined up, Steve, we've got, obviously, our, our regular features. Sure. We've got, uh, my classic film review. Always looking forward to that's that. That's already getting a little bit of, uh, you know, attention. From who? Wow, just various people. Go on, name some. Well. Can't name them what by name or just yeah. Uh, so, oh God, what's that one? Oh, Scorsese. <laughs> right. You want to, you to talk about <laughs> yeah. one of his films? Okay, good. Yeah. You going to talk about one of his today? Yeah. My, well, no. no what, what we've got like Spielberg. Up? Right. To do a Spielberg film. Okay. Uh, we've got, um, that film sounds good. Yeah. Now that's not my film review, that's where I take a, a track off a soundtrack of a classic film. Yes. And it's a great track and I go, oh, that film sounds good. <laughs> Brilliant. So. <laughs> yeah. Cause it sounds yeah. good, you see what I mean? But don't, please don't be confused and think that that's the film review. No, I hate people to no, think no, that. No, 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 no. That's why I wouldn't want. Yeah, yeah. Happen. We've got a song for the lovers, we've got a song for the ladies. Yeah, I'm gonna be playing a hip hop track. It's, it's called the class, it's called the, the hip hop track. It's called, uh, Steve says, hip hop hooray. Hey. <laughs> Pop right. That's not bad, it's, is it? Oh, it's just, just brilliant. Come well, on, if there's anyone listening, like you know, um, Sarchi and Sarchi or McCann Erickson or you know those people that do uh, advertising, then we are the people. We We're the come, people. Man. We can we can market. We'll market anything. Maybe you're a, a two bit band. You want to email in or something? You know, and yeah. just say how can we publicise our music? Yeah. We'll well, find I mean, it if works. we were marketing, say a, a band, we wouldn't say this is a two bit band. <laughs> that'd be, no, that'd be wrong. Was we'd that we'd say this is a yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd say this is a brilliant band. They're going uh, the, They're going from places. the excellent. I like it. When it's, it's always the same reviews. They it, it's sort of like um Mark Goodyear, they go inevitably. they go uh, um the excellent single by Coldplay Yellow. He goes oh Yellow that's Yellow <laughs> by Coldplay. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Why do they do the bit that says Yellow? We yeah. said it just to yeah. show. Like, I want to see something else in the song maybe maybe the mid late. Yeah, it would always be the new the brand new excellent album from Travis featuring the hit single Sing Sing <laughs> Sing Sing. <laughs> That's, That's a brand sing. new album from Travis. It features 12 other new tracks and sing. Sing, sing. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, well done. Actually, I'd buy it. No, I would. <laughs> Based uh, on that's that. about that's all the features we've got, isn't it? That's all the stuff we lined up. We were probably gonna, I don't know, probably wrap it, wrap it on about other stuff. Yeah. Carl, unless I'm very much mistaken, we've got something to give away. Is that right? The K man's with us, of course, pressing the button. <laughs> yeah. KP. Yeah, right, right. K man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Pilkington. Oh, no, can I just say there's nothing funny about that name? Just stra <laughs> it's no, straight away, seriously. Let's, let's clear that out straight away. You know, the you idea that Pilkington people are laughing. You can't, you, so in school, they'd go through the register, Anderson, they'd go through a well, Camfield, Sturgis. Sturgis. Well, no, it wouldn't go to Sturgis yet, would it? Oh, she wouldn't be there, would she? Well, no, P's before S, uh, S isn't it? But she just wouldn't be at school. <laughs> She'd be out <laughs> too busy in rehab. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pilkington. <laughs> okay, settle down. There's nothing funny about Pilkington. What's up with it? It's Pilkington. Pilkington. <laughs> yeah. Sounds a bit like Plonker. Yeah, or Pilchard. Yeah. So anyway, we've got, we've got tickets for <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever mocked the name before. I think <laughs> we're the first ones to do it. Oh, we're brilliant. We are. I don't think people you know up north figured that out that it was a funny <laughs> name. <laughs> Well, it probably isn't up there, is it? Because they've all got names like, cool, like Ramsbottom. Yeah. Wilkinson, Pilkington. Piddle Trent Hyde. <laughs> yeah. Oscar Piddle Trent Hyde, what are you doing? You're late. Anyway, Gervais. Well, all right. Okay. Now, that's an exotic it's name. It's a, a bit French. He pays French, your wages. Yeah. Blimey, here he comes. Having a go at the star of the show. Yeah. Blimey. Yeah. Do you want to play a record and get back to it? 
Yeah. We got tickets to give away, that's what we're saying. Carl, what's the tickets? People wanna know what the tickets are. After this record. Clever. <laughs> Shinobi versus Dragon Ninja. That's what I like about sort of rock and roll. It just, you know, sings, tells a story about everyday <laughs> things yeah. you know about. You Shinobi know. versus Dragon Ninja. Yeah. <laughs> was there any reference to Shinobi or the Dragon Ninja in the song? I wasn't listening. I wasn't really paying attention, but I'm assuming that some of that screaming was about Shinobi and the Dragon I don't know who won. If anyone knows who won out of the Shinobi and the Dragon Ninja. Oh, maybe it's, maybe it's like a trilogy. Maybe they sort of get together in one, then the second single, there's the fight. Right, Like sure. the mid thing in the film. Because mm. I don't know about film structure, because I do a film review. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Uh, and then the, the final one, uh, is, you know, the, the, the two of them pairing up against maybe a, a larger villain. Oh, a Godzilla type. Maybe. That's, that's interesting. Mm, I don't know, I mean, who knows, who knows. Okay, well, no, they do, Lost Profits, <laughs> <laughs> and they listening. They haven't written it yet. Are the Lost uh, Profits uh, English? Are they British? What's the deal? Pilkington. Who are the Profits? Pilks. Who's the Profs? Pilky. Um, uh, yeah, I think they are, yeah. Yeah. What, what was the answer, what was that? Are they English or, or American? I'd say they're American. Just have a guess? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you just say I don't know? <laughs> Instead of trying to fool us. <laughs> KP again trying to deceive us. KP, you were gonna tell us, Pilkey, you were gonna tell us, Pilchard, you were gonna tell us yeah. what. What tickets are anyway? But it worked for me, see, because when I was younger, yeah. we had a mobile disco. <laughs> Brilliant, so did I. And, um, it was me and my mate Colin Making, and the disco was called Pilkey's Making Music. That's brilliant. I mean, uh, genuinely brilliant. Pilk is making music. Guess what? When I first started to move on the disco, and this was when I was about 14, we just, we didn't really go at tour, we just would do it for like people's parties and stuff. We were called the rock and roll DJs. <laughs> no, really? <laughs> we oh, drew it on God. some, uh, on some sort of see-through paper and put a light behind it. Rock uh, and roll DJs. My first yeah. disco, I had, uh, two nights a week in this pub. What, you ran a disco? Yeah, this pub near King's Cross, right? And, uh, <laughs> it was just their records, right? And, um, every, I had to play a, this, this, a uh, number of songs every, time, the same time we so all the locals, all drunk, <laughs> with dancing and everything. One of them was, um, American Pie by Don McLean. Right. And they just sing along all the words, yeah. sort of drunk. It's about, about seven minutes long or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The other one was Baby Jane by Rod Stewart. Nice. If I didn't play that, I'd get lynched. <laughs> and what was the other one? There was another one that I always had to play. Um, oh, it was a, it was a ballad. I'll have to remember that. But yeah. But you, so, Carl, do you think, and maybe Ricky as well, do you think you know much about DJing for like, you know, the sort of, uh, the wedding party or maybe oh, someone's yeah. 18th? Oh, really? Mm. Okay, let me just uh, offer a little Test. hypothesis for Go you then. Um, alright, the buffet's been served, right? Yeah. People have done some speeches, mm. like yeah. it's a wedding do. Yeah. Um, so you've already played some records early on, you've stopped for food. Yeah. You've just played some light backing music in the background while the food's been served. You want to get the party rocking again, what do you kick off with? It depends. It depends. I've already got it down to two or three records. Okay, I'd like to hear what they are. Well, I've got it down to, uh, um, Earth, Wind and Fire. Right. That'd be great, it, you know, if there's, you know, depending on, uh, or, you wanna go a bit more modern, I'd, I'd probably start off with sort of Will Smith. Well, careful, Rick, I gotta bear in mind, it is a, is a wedding do, so there's people from age eight to eighty. You gotta cater right. every market. Okay. Carl, uh, what about you? See, this was back in eighty eight, so. Yeah. Kylie. Depend, yeah. Yeah. Can I tell you what the definitive track is? Go on. Oh, what a night. Thank you, Valley in the Four Seasons. Ding, ding, ding. People don't ne realise what it is exactly. It's fairway. Ding, ding, ding. Bound, down, 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 down. I can't actually play it. But, uh. Yeah, oh, what a night. Mm. Late December, back in 60s. That leads you straight into a 70s medley, and everyone's loving that. I'm thinking Bee Gees. There's gonna probably be some kind of ABBA track, Dancing Queen, all gonna storm. I, uh, well, you're, you're turning your noses up. I can tell you this, that we got bookings endlessly. People are going, you're amazing. I don't know how you do it. I wouldn't have got up. I would have sat there. Well, you might be, because you're one of those grouchy, you're one of those kind of moody teenagers. Oh, I'm not gonna dance to this. I'll yes. tell you, the old ladies would have been up. The people with a decent, decent bit of musical taste would be up. No, the Ricky first Gervais person to up. get up is a fat lady in a dress with bad ankles and a, and a little, a little kid who's got problems and he's in a little DJ. See, the problem with you two is you're not catering to the market. You're trying to be all sort of bohemian and kind of off, off, you know, teach people about music and stuff. There's no place for Kylie, not at a mobile disco. Far too avant-garde. All right, kick it in. Grease Megamix. Play, um, got play a record. Come on, Eileen. Have you got Come on, Eileen? Play that. What are you gonna play? Love Shack. Coldplay. Excellent. Yellow. Well, you'd never it's the that excellent is. single by Coldplay. It's Yellow. Oh, Yellow. That's Yellow by Coldplay. That was the stunning new single from Coldplay, Yellow. All the way back to 1999. When was it? 2000? It was. No, 99. Was, was it? it? No, was it? How about that? I didn't yes. realize so many people were fans of the Lost Profits. Everyone's been phoning in, emailing in, telling us they were from Cardiff. Yeah. Welsh band. Now, are you going to tell us what tickets you've got, Carl? What, to what have we got to give away? Tickets for... Now, we kept the secret. We said, no, tell us on air, so it's a big surprise. This is going to be, if it's going to be really rubbish, is it? This is, this, this, whatever these tickets are, right, is a testament to how much 
they rate us here at XFM, how much they rate our show and care about us, what tickets have we got to give away, a top show featuring Mickey Gervais and Steve Merchant and Pilkington, what tickets have we got to give away? Tickets for K-Fest. <laughs> right, go on. What's that? It's like, a, a rock thing that's going on tonight. Right. If you're, you know, if you're into the, that Welsh, Welsh... Right, well, name some of the bands. Uh, name some of the bands. Uh, Niall. <laughs> <laughs> go on. Right. That's one of the bigger ones. <laughs> um, Mark Lanigan. Who? Not Lanners. <laughs> <laughs> Is Lanners playing? He's not really. Yeah. Mark Lanigan really playing there? I think so. God, who's that? What? Who's that? <laughs> Who is Lanigan? Is he someone you went to school with? <laughs> Who is Mark Lanigan? Who, who else is Who is Mark Lanigan? Is he the promoter? <laughs> <laughs> who is he? Who is he? Is he head He's just in a pub in Camden. <laughs> 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 it got, it got, you got Niall- We're giving away tickets to the K-Fest! Hold on, let's have a look. This is, this is the enemy. Mark, Mark Lanigan, Masters of Reality. Right, okay. Who else? We got Niall, we got Mark Lanigan. Niall? Who else? I can't pronounce this one. Oh, let's have a look. That's good. Bethlehem or something? Bethlehem? Behemoth. Behemoth. Behemoth, is it? Let me see. God, no one can oh. read! I expect it from a northerner, but not from a university educated man like you, do Oh, they? yeah. Let me have a look. Where are we now? I can't even find it on the page. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah. Anyway. Me behemoth. Yeah, behemoth open proceedings. But hold on, I just thought something. We're not really giving those away, are we? Surely we're asking <laughs> some sort of financial reward for them. <laughs> right, okay, right. Um, is there a competition? No, let's just ex S South Carolina death metalers, Nile. Okay. Alright, okay. Uh, yeah, so K-Fest. Yeah, K-Fest, we've got, we've got, we've got a pair of tickets to give away? Yeah. Okay, um, uh, if you wanna go to, um, K-Fest, it's the Mean Fiddler, uh, Charing Cross Road, and that's, um, tonight, is it? Mm -hmm. The tickets would be 7.50, but we're giving away for free. Um... Why don't we say we're giving away for a fiver? No. That's still a saving. Uh, but I'll tell you what, can, um, if you can call in, what's the number? Oh... Oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three. Yeah, and if uh, the, the question is, because because they're quite sought after. There's big names here, like Niall and uh, and um, that uh, what's his name? Lanigan. Lanigan's on. Um, the question is, who wants to go? Yeah. So if you can call in and answer that question, who wants to go to that? Then you could be one of the lucky winners. <laughs> right. After this, some great chat and music. <laughs> could you also explain who Mark Lanigan is? <laughs> De La Soul. Watch out. Well, we're wrong. The lines went mental. To it's get amazing, isn't it? So that they, they, and they knew all about them, where they were from, what they were like, and uh, the tickets. Death metal's just something that's it's obviously passed me by, but it's obviously huge. It is huge. It's sort of huge without being sort of in the public eye. Yeah. Famous, I think. It's probably the the only real alternative out there now, isn't yeah, it? Because yeah. everything else is sort of mainstream. There's no real alternative music. Even, even hip hop. Yeah. yeah well, and Slipknot kind of have snuck in, haven't they? Because they yeah, didn't. The album went to number one or something. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. It still gets people saying, you're no son of mine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, you're probably not. You're probably a daughter or something. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah. You can't, I can't like, really tell. People who phone up about the, the, the heavy metal, though, they always sound such nice people. Yeah. The women always sound attractive. You know if you meet them, though, they're like eight foot tall. I don't know we, we've actually, we suddenly sound like two old ladies on a bus. <laughs> and you know what? I spoke to one of them rappers and he was as nice as pie. <laughs> Helped with the shopping and everything. I thought he was gonna kill me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I am, I am 27 years old now, Rick. 28, <laughs> yeah. according to Carl. <laughs> yeah. Talking of my birthday, you know, we, we did a, we, it was my birthday a couple of weeks back. Yeah. And I, we were talking about my, the stuff that my dad had given me, his presents yeah. in the past. And anyway, my sister told me that he'd, he'd listened to some of it on the car driving up and he was a bit quite upset and he had mentioned Oh, really? It to me. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, but it was all, it was all affectionate. It was done it? with affection, but it was like, we were slagging off his, his gifts, which were awful. I know. Yeah. He's probably listening again. Well, possibly. That happened to me on, once. On, oh, I remember, um, telling a story. On, uh, on XFM, and I'll tell you the story, okay, it, you, you've heard it, but I'll tell you the Um, well, it was, I used to live, um, in, uh, just a little one room, sort of bed sit, um, with my girlfriend, sort of in the, it was sort of late eight as well, and, uh, it was, it was just awful, it was one room, and we had a bed, and it's it sort of like, um, uh, the kitchen was the bedroom, so I bet, oh, it literally- The like, kitchen was the bedroom? Yeah, it was right. the bed in there, and then like a, like a, it was just one room we had, that's all we could afford, yeah? Bit and so we had- room. Yeah, and so, um, you know, the, the, you were sleeping in bed, your head was by the fridge and the, the sink was by your feet, and you had to go out and down the stairs to a communal toilet, so I, obviously, I'm a man, I could just pop out of bed, on tiptoes, the sink was quite high, and have a little wee in the middle of the night, so put in my clothes, that's fine. Into, so the, that's, into the sink, not the into fridge? Into the sink, into the sink, yeah. yeah. So, 
that that was that was fine. And uh, sometimes I just see <laughs> Jane go, "Oh, at least run the tap afterwards." <laughs> and I go, "All right, all right run the tap." Right? <laughs> and I just remember once. Um, go and at least take the dishes out first. Because <laughs> I used to sort of lift, if it was just full of dishes, I used to lift them up and sort of like aim underneath it and then, right, it was, it was, it was quite hygienic. It was, you know, right, but... What do you mean it was quite <laughs> hygienic? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was tired. World, like quite I, was, hygienic. I was tired and drunk. And, uh, uh, yeah, and it was, it was just a, oh, it was a horrible place. And we had mice. You've um, you've, you, you urinate quite a lot, don't you? You're quite a pr you have a problem with urination after lots. Well, I worry about time. getting caught, like on a tube. I have to, oh, I've, oh you know, I, oh, I don't take tubes anymore. Well, I listen to my, my dad's advice: is never pass a toilet and not use it because you never exactly. know when you might have to use that one again. Exactly, mine, you might yeah. Not, you might not yeah. see one for a long oh, time. but anyway, sorry. What I was going to say was, uh, um, Jane's mum was listening. What's the last story? When you yeah. said that story, and I said, uh, oh, I had Ricky's story. That sort of story about weeing in the sink. Is you it? No. <laughs> he makes an awful lot up. <laughs> he brilliant. makes an awful lot up. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's what we have to say. No, I was joking. You know, I didn't. I didn't mean it. So, uh, you know, I think I got away with it. Um, although she, her mum did watch me every time I went out to the kitchen when I was, <laughs> yeah. when I was at her house. You like, yeah, just go yeah. to. Right, Do you want to call me for sandwich? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. If so, just I'll have it the toilet's the over there, Ricky. <laughs> I know the toilet's over there. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, Oasis. Don't look back and anger. A classic there. Absolutely. From the from the the height of Brit pop. Oh my God, it's mad to think it's a classic now. And I was I there know. at the beginning. I know. I can't believe it. By the way, urinating isn't bad. It's a good thing. It's getting you know. No, obviously it's, it's good getting, getting the, the uh, it's, 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 I'm not saying the urination's a bad thing. I wasn't no. damning the fact that you needed to urinate. It was yeah. the fact you were doing it in the sink. With dishes, you probably exactly. Yeah. exactly. But you know, see, the thing is, in um, you know, there are there are some societies where if you urinate on something, you sort of own that that thing. What society is that? Cats, for example, cats. Right. So I mean, you know, cats are, you know, enigmatic creatures, aren't they? Mysterious yeah. creatures. I mean, so if I, you know, I, I sometimes I, I mean, I own a lot of things through that. Right. Same <laughs> telephone boxes. Yeah. You know, yeah. lot, lots of fences. My shoes. Your shoes once. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I was yeah. chasing you around Robin's <laughs> shoes once. Yeah. You'd be all right around, um, jellyfish. Cos, apparently... <laughs> is this a get... band that's playing tonight? It is a band, isn't it, actually? It was, I think. We're on yeah. a K-Fest. Yeah. Now, um, if you get stung by a jellyfish... Yeah. Uh, we... Stops it hurting. Is that true? Mm. It's just for anyone listening, I mean, I, it's probably best to check that maybe on the internet or, or phone a doctor <laughs> before you try that. I mean, because Carl, although Carl has got yeah. a lot of useful information, it's not, he's not a medically trained man. Yeah, because uh, I got in trouble once coming out of the sea at Bogner, running around, people going, wee on me, please. Yeah. Please wee on me. Just running around. So got I'm laughing, but. Yeah. You know. But, uh, have you ever wet the bed? I honestly haven't. I don't, ever. I've never, never wet the bed. Never wet the bed. Never. Okay, let's play a record then. Oh, we did a bit of, uh... Are you, you've wet the bed, have you? Wow, not, not as, not, Go not on. as such. Well, you may as well tell us. Um, well, yes then. <laughs> well, is there a story attached? Uh, well, I remember once, right? <laughs> God. Were you, was this when you were a child? <laughs> sort of. How old? 26. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, oh, God. <laughs> oh, it's another story involving... Anyway, right, once. Just one that sink, can Oh, we? God. Come on, Gervais. Well, once. I went to, uh, stay, um, went down to, to Brighton, to, with, um, Jane to, for a party, her sister's party. And, uh, we were staying at her parents' house, her parents were away. And, uh, first of all, I got too drunk. I don't, right. I didn't, I, hadn't, I don't think I'd known her very long, might have been. And, uh, I remember. It was a fancy dress party, and I didn't go to fancy dress. But I remember laying on the floor trying to trip people over because I was so drunk. <laughs> the sort remember? of thing that's hilarious if you're drunk. Yeah, imagine Jane going, "Oh, that's my boyfriend. I'm mm. so proud." Mm. To all her family, and then and then uh, we got a cab. I remember we got a cab journey home to her that I didn't remember. And apparently the cab driver going, "Is he all right?" Because I was going, <laughs> "I'm sick. I'm be sick." Jane, yeah, he's fine. Then I laid on the bathroom floor, and Jane timed it. It was 45 minutes me singing <laughs> "Right by Your Side" by the Arrhythmics. <laughs> And then I went to bed, and <laughs> apparently, I got up in, in the middle of the night, walked around the bed, and just thought the bed was a toilet. And Jane said, Ricky! I went, what? She went, you're pissing on me. I went, well, I don't wait, need to wake me up. <laughs> and then just got back to bed. You urinated on the bed. All right, let's, yeah. Bit of hip-hop. Oh, man, alive. 
Hip Hop Hooray! <laughs> hip Hop Hooray! Oh, it's the opportunity where Ricky get, uh, Steve gets to play one of his uh, classic hip hop tracks, something maybe you've not heard before, Rick. Can I just say, I actually slightly regret telling the story about me weeing. Yeah, well, it's, it doesn't stop there. I'm sure there's more. I'm sure you've told me more in the past. All right, just go on with the <laughs> hip hop track. Um, <laughs> this is from, I need to just introduce it briefly. It's from a, an artist called Mad Skills, who on this record claims that he has written loads of other people's songs, which I think is true. Uh, the only thing I would say is that the names of the artists he's supposedly written for have been bleeped out, but of course, because it's also a radio friendly version, all the swearing's been bleeped out as well, so there's a lot of bleeping, but if you can piece it together from it, it, it will actually be quite a good song. Go on. I'm gonna actually- No, don't- you, I, don't, you don't own it by urinating on yeah, it! Yeah, I am. No, you- Yeah. Put it away. Put- <laughs> Oh. Just a little dribble, that is mine now. That cost me over five quid. <laughs> Gorillas, rock the house, next FM, 104.9, two o'clock, halfway through already. Ricky Gervais show. With Steve Merchant. Yeah, telling really quite embarrassing things that I wish yes. I had now. Makes me look like some sort of mad old- Urinator. No, you just can't handle your drink. Uh, <laughs> you can't handle your drink. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can. I can. <laughs> I can. I just, I just get rid of it in the usual way of excretion via the kidneys, down the urethra, out the end, down the sink. <laughs> sometimes a sink, sometimes a toilet, Carl. <laughs> sometimes a bed. Yes. <laughs> or your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just, oh, embarrassing things. Um, I remember once, right? Um, I was- I used to love nature when I was about, like, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. I remember, um, going out, um, with, uh, my sister and my brother and, uh, their, um, girlfriend and boyfriend, like, to become their husband and wife. Um, and <laughs> Thanks I, for that. Yeah, you know, just, uh, just keeping yeah. continuity there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, I used to get shells and things around the beach and I used to get anything. I love nature. And I've- once I found, um, I love reptiles as well and I found this perfect, um, uh, snake skin. A, a, a grass snake or an adder. And it was, I, I, I absolutely lo I couldn't believe my luck. And I was going, look, look, and they were going, okay, put it down. Cause I th and I realised they were a little bit scared of it. They were going, put it down, it's dirty. And of course I torture them a little bit. And then, uh, uh, I thought it was hilarious and they made me leave it there and I told, told mum and everything. And then, much later when I had some friends when I was about 14 or 15, I was telling this story to embarrass my sister and, uh, uh, I was going, yeah, and she was scared of it. And she went, well, it was a used Johnny. She'd waited that long to embarrass me in front of oh my friends. God. I'd been running round with a used Jurex, thinking that this was great because they were scared of snakes. And they were oh. going, put it down, it's dirty. No, be careful of the poison. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's that. horrible. It is what? horrible, isn't it? Have I gone too far again? How could you not realise it was made of rubber, for goodness sake? Well, you obviously didn't know anything about nature. <laughs> well, oh, I used to love nature, me. Yeah, yeah. the difference yeah. between some skin <laughs> yeah. and the that, that, this rubber is the, and Johnny. Now be careful of the Johnny snake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> their little poppy head and their oh, yeah. poison that, oh dear. I always remember there was this kid who lived near me once and this, this bird got run over and he rushed it, he said, I can save it, and he kissed it. Because he thought he could <laughs> give me the kiss. <laughs> He thought he could well, give me the kiss of, of life. I thought you meant it was a girl. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> he got run over. And he kissed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, what, what? He, he, he thought he could give it the kiss of life, but he didn't know what the kiss of life was. He just thought you could kiss something and that would bring it back to life. <laughs> I think it was an excuse. I think to he was thinking, I can't bird. wait for a bird to get run over, then I can yeah. pretend to be giving it the kiss of life, but really yeah. I'm giving it a nice little snog on the I feet. I remember he kissed it like that and look, threw it up like it would fly, <laughs> like it would fly away, and it just went <laughs> whoomp oh, onto no. the floor. Oh, was it dead or? Yeah, it was, oh, it was blood everywhere. It was horrible. Oh, no. Yeah. And that, what is he doing now? Uh, he presents uh, Animal Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know what he's doing. But, uh, he's the worst bit in the world. Got yeah. struck off. Oh, to sleep with all his patients. Oh, that's terrible. Mm. Oh, bless him. I Just know. oh no, I killed a fish once. Go on. Um, well, I made a little bow and arrow. I was about um eight or nine, and I made a, a bow and arrow. And you know, you, do, you never think. Uh, I, we had a pond, and there was a huge fish in it, about um you know. Uh, eight inches long, a huge big sort of like gold north or something, or a carp or something. And then um, I was sort of playing and I aimed and I shot it and it went straight through it and floated to the top and I thought, oh my god. You pierced a fish with, a, with an arrow? That's an amazing yeah. shot. Well it was luck, it was pure luck. I You're never Native thought American. It. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, you know those little things outside you know, in the front garden by the front gate, the little um, sort of four inches by four inches bit, you lift it up and it's sort of like where the drains are if the, you know, the plumbers need to get there or the council or everything like right, that. Right, right. I dropped it down there and I thought, oh my god, what if that's discovered? What if I have to drive? So I ran loads and loads of journeys in and out of my house, right, to the toilet and back, just taking out, um, handfuls of vim and pouring bleach down thinking that I can get rid of this fish before <laughs> the council dig it up in <laughs> ten years time and yeah. go, send him to jail. <laughs> yes. Fish yeah. aside. But who do you think, what do you think they would have done? They'd have taken the dead fish they've gone to each of the doors going, 
Does it, is this your fish? <laughs> yeah, you but fish? You, you don't think... Do you yeah. recognise either the arrow or the fish? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you do, yes, it's arrow <laughs> straight through it. But, um, you know, you don't think when you're eight that it'd be okay. If I, if I can ride this out till I'm 20... Yeah. The statute of limitations on goldfish murder, yeah, yeah. It, you know, it is about, I can't work it out, 12 yeah. years. Wow. Uh, yeah, so that you're was... killer. Yeah. Carl, anything embarrassing ever happened to you ever? With what? With animals and stuff. Could so be animals. I like animals, to be honest. So do I. It was a mistake. No, you know, I thought you were f feeling bad about the fish. Yeah. But really, you were more worried about you being locked up. Well, I felt bad. Was there was, there was, there was both the law and the moral side of fish death. I mean, we kill fish yeah. all the time, just not usually <laughs> with a bow and arrow in a back garden <laughs> yeah. in Whitley. You know, <laughs> that often the supermarket can lend a hand with that. I used to sell mackerel. Did you? Yeah, and a pet magpie. Did you? Called Maggie. Oh, <laughs> inventive. Pet magpie. You mean you? Captured it and didn't let it go away. Yeah, can't have a pet magpie. But, but then it got really vicious. I mean, <laughs> well, it was quite quite, it's been let me go. What did you keep it in a rabbit hutch? No, it flew around, but it used to just like come to me all the time. But then it's like pecking me head and stuff. <laughs> 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 That's not a pet magpie. That's a bird in the garden. No, no, but I could actually, it, it, I could hold it and stuff. It wasn't scared of me, and it knew it was me. It used to come down from like the the top. <laughs> it of hated the... you. That's why it wanted to peck you. Is that uh, oh. and the other thing? Um, I always remember being younger and, uh, like, walking, walking through the woods to school with my mum and, like, I was chasing a butterfly <laughs> and she said, she said, um, she said, oh, don't do that, Carl. And I said, why? She said, because they only live a day. And I said, oh, all right, I'll get a dead one in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's genius. <laughs> That's great. That's quick thinking, yeah. isn't it? Oh. No, oh, that's sweet. Let's play some. Oh. <laughs> Wu-Tang Clan and Gravel Pit. We love that, don't we? I love it, yeah. Yeah, it's brilliant. Classic, right? Um, we're talking about embarrassing stories and stuff, and I don't know if I've told this on this radio before. Have I told you, Carl? I'm not sure. But this was when I was working at the BBC. This is not even long ago, and I moved to London, and I was fairly new in London. And I was working at the BBC, and I had this BBC hire car, and I've never told it. If there's anyone listening who works for BBC, I don't know if I can still get in trouble for it. But, uh, this BBC hire car, and it was like, I'd been ferrying kind of actors and people and production people around all day in this car. And I was driving back, it was quite late, it was about sort of seven or eight, and I was driving back, and I pulled in to get some petrol to fill out the car every day. And I went into this garage to fill out some petrol, and I was there. And this blokes, two blokes came in in a white van, right, they took, pulled into the, in the forecourt, and I was filling out the car. And they went, E, do you want to buy a couple of speakers? And I said, yes I do. Yeah. Because I, the, tell you the reason, it was like I was so flattered that they thought I'd be the kind of bloke who would A, need some kind of classy speakers, and yeah. B, would like to buy them on the sly. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I thought, yeah, they like the- They've they, seen me. They They've seen I look a bit of a hustler. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a street sort of guy. You can yeah. see, by the way, I use my walk. Exactly. Yeah. So they, so I, I couldn't believe my luck. So uh, they drove behind the garage, the little sort of garage bit at the back, and I went round there, sort of casually went round there, sort of locked the car, went round there. Uh, they went, yeah, open the back, you had these speakers in there. I, I said, are you sure these aren't knocked off, mate? He went, no, no. We work for Dixons. This is a story he spun me. We work for Dixons, right? <laughs> and we're delivery men, and if we make a delivery and the person's not there to sign for the goods, then we have to bring them back to the warehouse. But if we can sell them on the way back... Yeah. Then that's really good that for Dixons. Happens. That, yeah, Dixons must love that. And instead of thinking, <laughs> are you sure some kind of troubleshooter didn't, I mean, did someone go into, go into Dixons and go, yeah, you, no, you're not getting in the, uh, garage for court Jones. Exactly. Get a couple of lads in a white van. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So anyway, so I sort of bought this story, and it, and I was a little bit dubious, and I went, right, let me hear them then. And he wired them up to the car stereo, and boom, 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 they playing. So it was some groovy hip-hop, I was thinking, great, these guys know what I'm into. Yeah. And I, he's giving me the talk and stuff, and, um, I said, I'm a bit worried these are, these are knocked off. He went, no. Listen, uh, we got a bloke at Dixon's who can confirm this is fine, right? Phone him up, use my mobile, right? And quote this reference number, right? So I phone out, and the bloke goes, yeah, I go, hi, some guy's here in a garage forecourt trying to sell me some speakers. Just wanted to check. He went, it's fine. I went, should I, should I just read the reference number or whatever? He went, if you want. And X14, and I went, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. You right. know that was, don't you? That was actually <laughs> Mr. Dixon himself. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So I'm thinking, well, you know, they sound great. They're yeah. giving me to a, for a knockdown price. I was, say they were like 400 quid, they were like 200 quid or something. It was a good bargain. I was in the market for some speakers as well. Yeah. So, uh, while they were loading it's them in- It's all kosher. I phoned Dixon. <laughs> exactly. I yeah, phoned yeah, Dixon. Yeah, That's yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, so while they're loading them in the back of the BBC hire car, right? I'm in there paying for the petrol, right? And the guy who's serving goes, eee, oh, you're right. He goes, what were you doing around the back with those blokes? Right? Because obviously there's security cameras filming this whole transaction, right? And, and he goes, what are you doing around the back? And I went, brilliantly, I went, there's some old mates. Some of my mates were just having a chat and that. 
He went, oh, right, okay, like, giving me, obviously, the evil eye. So I went out the van, and so I'm in the car now, and I'm driving with one of the blokes who's in the van with me, because I didn't have the money on me, so I had to go to the cash <laughs> point to get the cash, right? So I'm driving with him, and the other guy's, dr like, following me in the van, and he was, like, a northerner, like, you, and he was giving it all the, all right, yeah, you know. I tell my girlfriend's a DJ, she's got some of these speakers, they're fantastic, da da da, and he's giving me this, and then my mind starts working. Now that I've got a bit of time to think, I'm thinking, wait a minute, this all sounds a bit dodgy. Yeah. It dawned on me, Rick. You, you, you know, Paul, are you streetwise? <laughs> exactly. You're streetwise, Steve. <laughs> Not only yeah. that, I was thinking, how am I gonna get them home? I've got to drop the car off at the BBC. How am yeah. I gonna get these huge speakers back to where I live? And how can I pay for them? Because I've just spent a hundred pounds on Find the Lady. <laughs> exactly. With a couple of blokes in <laughs> <Yeah, exactly. laughs> square. Yeah. It seemed like a fair game. <laughs> Some so, of his so friends I, were winning. But so I explained to him, I said, how I can't get them back to like Brixton where I was living at the time. He went, don't worry, give us an extra twenty quid, we'll take them home for you. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Delivery. <laughs> 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 they do a whole service, you see, and there's also a backup guarantee. <laughs> Did they have the guarantee, the three-month guarantee? <laughs> they didn't. No. But so then, so, you see, I said, I'm not sure about that. He went, well, why don't you put them in a cab, send them back, and your housemates can collect it. I was like, oh, no, there'll be no one in. And I was getting, and I was beginning to sort of get a bit conscious of, like, maybe this was a bit of a scam, after all. So I pulled into, like, a little side road, and I said, I'm not sure I'm into this now, actually. He went, what are you talking about? It's 200 quid for Paris because it's a bargain. You never get a bargain like this, mate. I'm going, not too sure, actually. I don't think I want them. He went, 150 quid, 150 quid, mate, 150 quid. I went, no. He's 100 quid, 100 quid now to you. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, this doesn't sound like the kind of work that Dixon's would be doing. Dixon's don't do that <laughs> when I go sure in. This is it. Yeah. Never, just, Dixon's should. never negotiate in that way. When, when I go there, I look around and I leave, they go, where are you going? <laughs> exactly. I go, I'm just, we'll have anything then. Have anything for a So quid. I stopped the car and the white van pulled up behind me with his mates in. Sure. And, uh, and I said, can you get them out? I'm not interested. And he went, oh, 100, 100 quid, mate. Oh, you, you, and he was just going, you tosser, you, you obviously want some speakers, duh, duh, duh. and he was having a go at me. So I was carrying the speakers out and putting them back in the white van, and he was just shouting at me, duh, duh, duh. he was going, 70 quid, 70 quid, I was like, 70 quid from 200, this is ludicrous. You realise that wasn't Dixon's policy <laughs> exactly. then? Exactly. They don't usually shout, moment. you tosser, as you leave the, <laughs> as you <laughs> leave the shop and walk down Camden High Street, they're <laughs> not usually <laughs> shouting, you <laughs> tosser. You should have thought the offer of, like, the monthly payments they've gone at the moment. <laughs> So, um, so I eventually I put them in there and I sort of knocked the deal on the head and I got back in my car and, uh, they got, they were in theirs and I just looked in the rearview mirror and they were punching the dashboard, like, with aggression and venom, like, we let that deal slip through our fingers. And I've never been so terrified in my life. I just sat there and I was just thinking, oh my god, all I was thinking now was, what if I go back to the BBC and they go, we've had a call from the police, the man at the garage, he saw yeah. you doing the dodgy deal. I love it. Yeah. Well, what you so do is, what you do is, you put the hire car in a drain in your front garden <laughs> and then go in and out of the toilet, just pouring bleach <laughs> down or Ajax and they never know. This is Song for the Lovers. A lovely song there, Song for the Lovers. Absolutely. Neil Young, Man Needs a Made Off the Harvest album. What a beautiful song that beautiful. is. Beautiful. Beautiful strings yep. and everything. Well, you've got a song for the ladies coming up. Song for the ladies later on well, as well. Well, that, yeah. that has set, you know, the standard that's there. Well, absolutely, yeah. 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 Um, were you going to uh, do a film review as well later? Have you still got that uh, Well, I could, do, I could do a film review now because it's, well, a, if it's quite got, a big... I thought you needed to prepare, but... No, I mean, no, it's quite a big film and I've seen it and it is, uh, you know, it's, it's a great, it's a great film. So okay. I, I hope I can do it justice because it's a very... Okay, oh, this week. What film is it gonna be? It's gonna be Shinder's List. Okay, and are you gonna do a jingle for us? Uh. <laughs> Rookie's film review. <sighs> okay. This is a film by Steven Spielberg. Yes. And it, cause it's in olden times, it's all black and white and that, except a, a coat that's red. I don't know what happened there. Um, anyway, it's about a, a bloke who's called Schindler, and cause there were so many people we wanted to save, he had to make a list to get organised. And, uh, he tried to save as many as he could. Um, and, the, you know, he ma uh, made him sort of not make the bullets properly on purpose, cos he, you know, uh, and, uh, in the end, they gave him a ring. Um, it's the same bloke who made E.T. <laughs> okay. Your review of Schindler's List. Yeah. And, as ever, uh, mark out of ten, please. Uh, nine. It was brilliant. You really enjoyed it? Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, did the fact that it was three hours long bother you? Uh, no. No? Quite like no. that. No. Okay. Watch some of it on Fast Forward. Okay, okay. Um, Carl, have you seen Schindler's List? No, I'm surprised the man should get all that in three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? Would that encourage you to see the film? Definitely. Yeah. Okay, what would you give it a mark out of uh, ten? Nine. You'd give it nine as well. Mm. Okay, I'll tell you, I... That red coat effect thing you're going yeah. on about, that's... that's yeah. You sold it. You like that, yeah. idea? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was just a, a, a mistake, apparently. Uh, apparently, yeah, yeah. Probably just couldn't get all the colour out of it. As I said before, if you've got a film that you'd like to have reviewed by Ricky Gervais, then yeah. email us, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. 
and I'm sure he can, uh... Or even the, you know, all the, not just, like, um, the people, but what about the ones who make the films? Like, you know, the ones that actually make the film, what are they called? Hollywood. Yes. If they want me to do one for that coming out to sort of give it a little bit of a boost. Yeah. You saw me give away the tickets, that was selling. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we can, we can sell your product, and we make it look like it's all editorial, but really, if there's a little bit of money involved, <laughs> I can probably give it a nine out of ten instead of four or something. <laughs> I, so, Rick, would you do that without having seen the film? Yeah. That's fine, because they wouldn't even, they could just tell you what was coming up, and then if, if, it, if they said this, uh, give us a good review, and here's twenty quid. Yeah. If they go, oh, no, oh, oh, give, there's no money in it, I'll give, probably give it a bad well, review. Try that, that, Rick, can I just try that there? Because I mean, other people listening w won't be necessarily convinced. Um, Lord of the Rings. Let's imagine I've paid you now to uh, to review the forthcoming film Lord okay. of the Rings. What do you make of it? This is a brilliant film. Yep. And even though it's all about wizards and that, and there's people in caves called gonads um, with beards, Rob, probably Robbie Coltrane's in it because he's in the other one at the yeah. moment. Um, and there's it's all swords and stuff, and there's some magic. Uh, but it is the, is actually the Lord of the Rings, not just like you know, just one of them. He's the Lord of it, and he's he's excellent in it. <laughs> so, right, Mark at ten, nine again. Very popular film for you, Carl. Less convinced by that one, maybe. That doesn't sound as good as no. as the other one. Yeah, what are you gonna give it? Seven. Mm. Still give it nine. You still give it excellent because we we split it. We split yeah. the money. Okay, yeah. excellent. Good. This <laughs> is the me. this is the eels. Sorry about that. That was a mistake. I don't know the shit that was, but it was too late to get it out of the. CD players, Muse, and feeling good. What do you think of that? Uh, I'm I'm not a fan of Muse, but I wasn't quite as venomous in my uh, hatred. Don't worry, we won't play that again. Um, no, I, well, no, let's let's explain the situation in the studio. There's a certain frosty air now because what? we ended up playing Muse. Yeah, it was it, you know, it was a mistake. Yeah, but it's mm. not that bad. Well, no, it's not it's not as bad as Ricky what? thinks it. I admit it's not as bad as that, but I'm standing out of it. Because I'm not a fan of Muse, I wouldn't play Muse generally. Well, I don't I mean, mind <laughs> Muse generally, but well, I, I hate. Well, that. What you like Muse normally? I hate Muse. Well. I don't hate them. Says the man who bought the Like Funky Ones album. Well, yeah, but I wouldn't play them on XFM. I know, but Muse fits in. I mean, you, you're saying you want to play Radiohead. So playing the Nina, like doing the Nina it's Simone. A Why don't we play Radiohead then? That's what I was saying. We're Let's playing Radiohead, but Muse is like Radiohead. There's not a big difference. <sighs> anyway, we're not going to argue. There is a big difference. Phone in if you. What's the difference between Muse and Radiohead? What's the phone number? What do you mean, what's the difference? What's, well, there they are, let's have a competition. Let's see if p people can tell the difference between Muse and Radiohead. Give the number out. Can't be bothered. Nor can I. So it's left to me to keep the thing afloat. Yeah. That's never good news. Um, I went to see the White Stripes this week, good. if anyone's interesting. <coughs> uh, anyone interested in that? Go on, Steve. White Stripes are absolutely amazing. I've heard all the hype. You know, I've not listened to the album. I went along to the gig, got a free ticket. Wasn't even a pound off. It was free. Ten pounds. I could have. I could have sold it outside the gig. I didn't. I went in. Right. Couldn't take along a mate. XFM wouldn't let me. Uh, I went there on my own. You know. Went in there. I have to say, I wasn't expecting much. They were amazing. They were absolutely amazing. I have to say this now. For they were the best band I'd seen. Who are like I didn't know much about or whatever. Like they were a new band. They were the best band I'd seen live since I saw a Little Band. You might have heard of called Oasis for five pounds at Coventry Poly. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's a long name for a band. <laughs> and. um... It was amazing, and it's a brilliant band because it's just the two of them. Obviously, the girl on the drums, the guy playing the guitar. He's got a real kind of rock guitar skill. He really plays it up and down the um, the long neck bit. I mean, I know all about the music and that the terminology. Yeah, he was amazing. Yeah. Sometimes he plays like kind of kind of steel with that steel pedal thing on his not steel pedal, the, th the finger thing, the kind of thimble thing that some guitarists wear. I believe it's called a, a guitar thimble. <laughs> I believe is the name for it. And he plays that like old bluesman would play. He plays that sometimes. Old sometimes bluesman. Somebody's got like a little electric keyboard thing, or piano, as I believe some people call it. See, and this isn't a review, this is listing the instruments. <laughs> well, all right, all right, there's not many to get through with. There's okay, some drums yeah. and a guitar. What colour microphones were they? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Were they SM58? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the point is this. Go on. With just those few simple instruments, they yeah. had this huge sound, a big rocky sound, yeah. quality, kind of bluesy punk with a little bit of, uh, yeah. energy to it. It was amazing, I have to say, I, I was a huge fan. And so I thought we could play a bit of White Stripes, you know, to we sort could. of commemorate that excellent gig. I saw a band once, right? There was a drummer, had all the drums, <laughs> right. big one at the bottom. <laughs> Two of the diddlums once, cymbals. Yeah. They were all mic'd up with different microphones <laughs> coming down the loudy speaks. I was the back, it was still wow, I can hear everything on that. Electrical, really. And a guitar. And a bass. Can I do a like a gig review every week? Like you no, do your be, film review. No, good, yeah. We well, just did. Well I'm about you, as well I'm about as well informed about music <laughs> as you are about films. <laughs> Ooch, anyway, how do, tell me the Ooch, how do you choose the playlist? It, feeder, just today. Now because we're running out of time, yeah. Because of that muse shit we had to play, um, I think I uh, say uh, that's my feature. That.
PlayStation game sounds good. <laughs> right. Because that's the, uh, the main music of the PlayStation 2 game, Gran Turismo. <laughs> right. So I, I could incorporate that. Brilliant. Yeah, and I've, I've still got to get in, uh, uh, song for, um, the, the, you've got to get in song for the ladies. Yes. At the end. Got anything else lined up? Well, I, I just, I mean, it's just, you, I, I've never seen you spiral into such despair after hearing Muse. I mean, well, fair enough, is that they're not a great band. Well, but obviously, we have to, you know, there's a bit of a playlist we have to keep to, and we drop the records we don't like. Yeah. Right, and play the ones we do. And that's fine. And if I don't care for a track, I don't mention it. I don't usually slag off bands, and I know we've got to keep to a playlist. I don't know how they're chosen or anything. But, you know, there's one thing I didn't want to play. It's feeling good. Yeah. And it was already lined up, and there was no time, so I was, I was genuinely annoyed. Because I don't mind, like, playing stuff that I wouldn't actually choose myself that's all right. But, you know, it, 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 you know, we're not completely free played all the time. So the worst thing is I don't want to ever play Feeling Good again. I don't want to ever play Kashin again. Kashin is what Kashin is. I'm thinking of putting a ban on Gorillas. What, anything you like to ban? Basement Jacks. Basement Jacks. Oh, where's your head at? We already where's dropped that. Where's your head We dropped at? that on purpose, didn't we? What else have we dropped today? That this is, that's what we saved people from. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like playing five songs over and over again just because some record company wants it to be played. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna play things I hate, let, play, pay me. You know what I mean? I'm willing to take bribes. <laughs> Look, I've been sent some chocolates here by the lads out of, um, uh, what, Carter, USM, right? Are they and still the, going? Yeah, they've got a gig at the Who's the Daddy Now tour, right? They're playing the Astoria at December the 14th, on December the 14th. Oh 14. my god, it's worth going along just to see how few people will be there. Well, see, I wouldn't use play, but they've sent me chocolates, so there's a, you know, there's a plug. It's like, you know, bribe me, not XFM, <laughs> yeah. all right? Let's yeah. get some out of this, Steve. Okay. All right? Yeah, I'm not sure I- I'm not sure I, even I'd think so low as to be bribed by <laughs> Carter. I mean, I'm a man who tried to buy dodgy speakers Steve, on the street. Steve, it's a Christmas Father Christmas <laughs> with some jelly beans. Uh, is that from- who's that from? That's from- that's from the lads- oh well, um, the- it's Who's the Daddy Now tour. Okay. And I've got- um, and I've got some, uh, um, chocolate money. Right, lovely. Yeah. Some anything, of it- some of it French. Got anything there from the senseless things? <laughs> Or the wonder stuff? <laughs> no, but you know, we don't know. They're not what they're doing now. Yeah. Uh, Carter was alright at the time. Yeah. Uh, Carter was alright. Carter? Yeah. Right. Do you like Carter? Not really, no. It's nonsense. Well, I didn't like him singing about Dagenham all the time, whatever no. it was. No, yeah. what was it? New, New Cross. Cross yeah. yeah. But, you know, some Good. funny um, lyrics. Have, anything some else puns. you want to get off your chest? Uh, no, the war let's, in let's, play, yeah. uh, let's play some songs we like. What have you got lined up? Andy? I've got the song for the ladies, that's coming oh, up in a second. Oh, lovely. Yeah, let, let's, let's choose a song here and let's have a look. Yeah, let's right, this one here, it's Ricky. Uh, what? Oh, Radiohead. Just. Brilliant. Is this Muse? <laughs> Radiohead and Just. Off the bends. Now that's yeah. a track. It's that's been a, a roller coaster uh, ride of emotions, this show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It started off there with some light hearted anecdotes about you and animals. Yeah. It ended up with you sort of spiralling into uh, despair. Wow. You know, that's what, that, that, the that's the what a track by Muse can do to a man. Yeah, yeah, well, clearly. You know, did yeah. I ever react? But then maybe, well, I mean, maybe that's what, that's what makes them good. I mean, if music can, you know, create those kind of passions in someone, maybe that's effective, I don't well, know. Well, you've made me think again, I well, love it's, Muse. it's the punk approach, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, Carl, thanks uh, as ever for pressing the buttons and contributing. Yeah. All right, mate. Um, good job, good job. Shame about the news. Yeah. <laughs> he <laughs> he won't be getting a nine for his movie next week. <laughs> <laughs> won't be getting a nine. <laughs> I think you guys should kiss and make up and maybe oh, make Oh, well, it. that's not Carl's fault. Go and kiss him. No, I'm not gonna kiss oh, him. But go oh, and touch him. Kiss him. I'm not gonna kiss go him. Go and touch him. him. I'm touch go him. and touch him. Should we go both go and touch him? Yes. Why don't we play a song for the ladies? And touch him. This week, Drugstore, okay. White, uh, yeah. White Magic for oh, Lovers, beautiful see. track. And let's just go and kiss and touch Carl. Take the jumper off. Strokes last night on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais show. With Steve Merchant. Definitely, definitely. Ahoy. And little Carl Pilkington. Little K over there. The K man. Steve. Yes. Don't worry anymore. Go, okay. I've procured some great gifts to give away. I was tired really? of seeing all these other people getting gifts and that, and it was go yep. all going to that, uh, O Doddle and, uh, O Diddley. Diddley, and, Diddley yeah. And, uh, uh, Anderson and Sturge, or she, at least she steals them herself. Well, at least she, she steals them herself to sell them to feed the habit, and that's yeah. why I don't mind that, because it's no. industrious. Exactly. But I have got Feeder, Echo Park, I've got the Essential Bob Dylan, now that is a good giveaway. That's a great giveaway. And Reloaded 3. Where have you, did you buy these yourself? No, you? little Carl found them. Let me, I have to say, Carl, you've done an absolute dynamite job here, mate. This is great prize. And I thought we could play that trivia quiz where we, we we're the challenge. They, if they get right. someone to catch us out, maybe, or some a question. Like you confused me slightly. Explain again. Well, we could play a little trivia quiz, couldn't we? Right. And then we could sell the fish. <laughs> Use the words that you need man. to complete the sentence, and Rick. And then, and <laughs> oh, we could do this. 
Wh what's the quiz? I don't know. You not thought this through? No. Coldplay and Yellow. <laughs> You've got to keep talking, Rick. We're on the right. radio. I got bored. Did you? XFM 104.9. Yeah, with Steve Merchant. What I was saying was... Yes. We could have a little trivia quiz, right? This is how it works. Their- their phone in, yeah? Right? And they pitch a question to us two, right? We won't know it. They'll tell Carl and Carl write down the answer, yeah? Or uh, on his email, right? <laughs> and then it might be something like, um, oh, uh, who was the, f uh, first woman MP? And they uh, write down the answer and they go, okay, Steve Ricky, who's the first one MP? We'll write it down. You know, I mean, you'll write down something like the Queen. Yeah. And I'll write down Britney Spears. <laughs> yeah. And they go, well, Ricky says Britney Spears. And the answer is, did I see? Yes, 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 and, yes. And yes. then whoever's. So they, can they, can they phone in or do they, can they email as well? They can email as well, Steve. Right. Okay, so let me just try and clarify this because I didn't really follow that and no. I know what the competition is. Right. <laughs> um, people listening. Phone in or email in with a question, a trivia yeah. question. It could be about anything. I right? don't do game shows. But like one, not, but one which we may be able to get, right? They phone in with that or they email it in. But uh, only Carl knows the answer. He asks us here in the qu studio the question. Ricky and I write it down independently. We hand it to Carl. We see who's got the right answer. It's like fifteen to one, but two to one. And the great thing is that the best question that we'll vote on at the very end of the show can win these three CDs. We've got Feeder, Echo Park, the Essential Bob Dylan. That's a two CD set, Rick. Maybe keep the questions highbrow to show our intellect, not things like pop and trivia. And Good idea. And, and we've also and got this big uh, compilation, Reloaded Three. That's also a two CD compilation. We'll start phoning and emailing now. Phoning, like emailing go with your trivia Absolutely questions go berserk. for Gervais. I'm best mentioned. at science. Well, don't start well, don't giving things. That's not fair, because I'll say I'm best at films if they want yeah, me to Yeah, but I've already said don't do trivia and entertainment and that. Well, they should do. Well, they should no. do trivia and entertainment. Music and films is what they should do. No, they shouldn't. Or old TV. TV. That's, that's the cliche of XFM listeners, and I know they're more intelligent than they're that. They're not. They're not, Rick. They're <laughs> stupid people. <laughs> <laughs> they're stupid, stupid people, and they only know about a few things. <laughs> Garbage, cherry lips on XFM 104.9. Well, either they really want those CDs, or they want to embarrass us. Mm. Uh, cos the phone lines are going mad and They are going mad. Are we didn't even give out the phone number or the email, Rick. Shall I just give it out now? Well, obviously Could I don't need to. Well, I ought to anyway, for those well, that didn't hear it, but didn't know it already. Of it. 08700, 08700, 800, 1, 2, 3, 4. Sorry, that's not 08700, 08700, cos I, I started again cos I got, I sort of fluffed slightly. Yeah, go on. 08700, 800, 1, 2, 3, 4. And when he says he fluffed, like, that, that's not how he got into television. <laughs> exactly. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk if you want to email the question. And only Carl can see the screen, so there's no cheating. Probably people don't know what fluffing is, do they? No, I don't think so, Rick. Uh, Carl, have you had a question? What, already? Are we doing it now? Do we we do it now? Oh well, I think we should just drip them this, in throughout the yeah, course of the show. Yeah, yeah, you could drip in them in. Go on. <laughs> Ask yeah, us a right. question. I thought this was a good one. It's from Clive. Go on in. Clive? We've got a listener called Clive. Why? That's all right. Who was the first James Bond? Oh, is right. this film one? I know No, that. but wait a minute, but wait I, a minute. I know, I know this ambiguity because we've talked about We've it. talked about this ambiguity before. You see, he could he might be deliberately embarrassing us because the old myth is that someone played it on radio yeah, at that we all know and love. Yeah. Now, he should have specified, did he mean the film, James Bond, the first well, the film, thing James Bond? Is, that, that, can I just say, that we, we won't count this one, because the definitive one, and I've talked to, to Glenn about it as well, it, it, it's Doctor No, it was the first one of the team that we- Sean Connery. Know. So, Sean Connery's the first screen James Bond. So, we, we agree on that, even if we're both wrong. What did he say it is? I bet he said, I bet he said it was Bob Holness who played him on radio in, like, the 1950s. He didn't say the radio bit, but he said Bob Holness. From Blockbusters. Yeah. And I was drawing a little Blockbuster thing. That's yeah, really that, spooky. That is, that's weird, isn't it? But the thing about that is I- I'm worried if it might be a myth. Mm. It may be well, a no, myth. Well, no, I don't- I don't think it is. It's that- that we can't One point that. to me, then. No. Yes. No. Well, you did- did you not. know it? Did you know it? Did yeah, you want we talked about no, it. No rubbish! Yeah, but who- well, if we talked about it, did I say it to you? No, we agreed that it was Sean Connery because it-, it just like, we didn't count Casino Royale because you said it wasn't by the same team and it Yeah, was but that spoken. wouldn't have been the first James Bond anyway because that came later in the series. No, Rick! No, 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 no don't way. play the music! No way. That's clearly a point! You didn't know it was Bob Holness. He meant it was Bob Holness. I knew the answer, wasn't it? Well, fun-loving criminals. Scooby Snacks. Anyway. It doesn't matter, because we, we both agreed once in the pub that the right answer is Sean Connery. Yeah, but wait a minute, wait, 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 Rick, the that. point's not that. The man phoned in with a question, and the yeah. answer the man was after was Bob oh, Hollis. Okay. And that's the answer I'll tell you I gave. what, the, the answer I was after was me. But that's I not something I, I he's the question master, the man who phoned in. That's ludicrous. You, you, to face the facts. You can't say, you can't say what number am I thinking of. You've got to, you've got to be, it's got to be the real answer. No, but I knew the answer he was after. 
So oh, brilliant. Yes, because that's, you know, even if he's got it wrong, it's such common parlance now that Bob Holness was the first James Bond that I knew the answer. Face the facts. Right, give us another question, Carl. Jeez. Give us another question. God, he's a bad loser, isn't he? <laughs> I had a good one here, but... You've, you've forgotten it? Or... I sort of scribbled it down. This um, is brilliant, isn't it? Hang on a minute. We can edit this out, can't we? It's we not live. It's, it's only a pilot. It's gonna... <laughs> 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 this is gonna look great when it, when it comes out. Go on. Which food? Yeah. Um... Carl, you know making up the question? No, 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 it's just that I sort of took down the important bits. Bro, this is amazing. This is amazing radio. Go on. Which food... kind of doesn't make you fat? Oh, jeez. <laughs> What kind of a question is that? Oh, this is... No, it is proper. I love... I love... The, imagine um, this on The Weakest Link. <laughs> what kind of food doesn't sort of make you... I mean, it doesn't make you fat. Um... This what is... What, 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 okay, do you want me to... Basically, no sort of calories in it. Um, celery. Water. Well, I mean, what do you mean? Do you mean a, 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 a vegetable? No, do you you're, mean you're right, you're right. Apparently you... Yeah, you, it uses up more calories more to bite it, it than, than... Yeah, but wait a minute, wait a minute, Rick. One, one all. No, it's not one all because you're supposed is. to write it down. You didn't know. But you didn't... I, what do you mean I didn't know? You're supposed to write it down. That's the whole point we're writing You down. said water! You said water! But that's because I thought we weren't taking the question seriously because he didn't know what he's talking about. One all! We got to set the rules. This is Luke. Bit too much like Portishead for my liking. Was it? Yeah. I quite enjoyed it. Beat a band. Well, that's because Porter said from your neck of the woods, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> Port, well, Porter <laughs> no, said, I think you're fine. <laughs> yeah, I embarrass yeah. myself. <laughs> 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 right, well, another question, quick. Is this, is this one, is this question a real question with a definitive answer? Or is it like, what is my most comfortable chair? <laughs> I don't know why people aren't going to maybe like Trivia Pursuit or something, just getting a question off that and then... Because they're, they're a little bit more discerning than that, Steve. Have you heard the questions? They don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> this is stuff they've overheard in pubs. <laughs> Go on. Yeah. Ask it. Ask it, Carl. I look at the car takes down and goes, what's that? <laughs> I know. What am I meant to write? Go on then, ask this one. Right. Um, what, what sort? No. <laughs> the <laughs> the Pope. Yeah. Um, what semi Sorry, Aunt, Mrs. R Robinson, we're gonna have to let you go. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> you are the weakest link, Carl. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, go on. The Pope. Yeah, the Pope. Yeah, we've got the Pope. Yeah, <laughs> that's not strictly a question. He wears a, uh, oh, so, uh, <laughs> he wears a dustman's hat. He wears gold blimey trousers. Yeah. Does he live in a council flat? Yeah, he, he lives in a council flat. He wears but... a semi-precious stone. What's the stone? The Pope uh, wears a semi-precious stone. What is the stone? You mean, you mean, what is it called? Yeah. What is it called? What, is it got like a kind of, um, well, papal I think, name? I think it's like, you know, is it, is it a 18 is it... carat one? <laughs> so we got to try and get right. the carrot uh, yeah. of the Pope's big diamond. He calls it Dennis. He calls it Dennis the Stone. <laughs> <laughs> do they want the, the do they want the type of gem it is like or is there some kind of papal name for it? Or do they want it like the Rosetta Stone or I don't know. the oh, you, oh I can't <laughs> play a record. Play two records. Let's look. Where's your head at? Basement Jacks. Mm. Right. Okay. Let's get this. Have right. we have we have we knocked this on the head, Dennis? It's not happening. Oh, here he is. Look, here he is. Come in. <laughs> in a, he's uh, how have you? Oh, oh God! I don't believe oh, that. Oh, that's pathetic. I do not believe that. I that's heard... absolutely pathetic. Now they won't believe this, will they? No. Right. Oh, yeah. If I say that Jonathan <laughs> Ross just got his massive member out, and he is a big lad. Come and, yeah. come and sit down. I've got your tickets, Mr. Gervais. Thank well, you. What's going on here, then? I, I mean, why yeah. are you dropping off tickets? Well, because, you know, in, in the spirit of the, the Comedy Awards, we like to have the rising young stars of the British Comedy that's Awards. That's right. Yeah. And that's and, me. Well, we couldn't find any this year, so we'd like to see whether he would sit in the rising young star seat. And I, I wanted to deliver the tickets personally, so there's no excuses if he doesn't turn up later. Yeah. I, I always suspected that you were sort of pretty well endowed. Yeah. And uh, now, and now we've seen, you know it's on webcam. That, that, that was just one of my cocks. <laughs> <laughs> We That's the one you're wearing today. That, didn't we? Did we you? Yeah, don't say that. that. No, we were This is going to be the happening young station. What's going on? No, right. you can't say stuff like that. You yeah. can't. So no, just no. careful what you say. Look after Julian Clary. Oh, Take his wilderness I... and he comes back in a person. Like, Ten years of the wilderness. That's to you. That's Jesus just, you're thinking of, isn't just, it? Just because <laughs> you're on everything at the moment. I walked I mean. in here and I came in here and I thought this is the young happening place and what do I see in here? Three old men sitting What are you talking about? Room. I'm look only 28, 27. You, know. you all yeah, look, you're crazy. wrecked. You all look wrecked. You're well, that's because we're always partying. I was looking for some youngsters. Where's the youngsters? I wanted to see some tight leather pants. I wanted to see some foxy chicks hanging on you everywhere. What is it? It's a bunch of old blokes on a block and they're washing up in a sink. He even dresses for radio. Look <laughs> this is him. ludicrous. It's amazing. It's like, you're, you're I love the fact you were on the phone to Gervais last night, weren't you? Asking his advice yeah. 
on clothes. Well, look at him. Well, He's going for the man down the DSS. I look. like that look. That's a nice look. <laughs> Have you got a single pair of trousers that aren't elasticated at the waist? <laughs> 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 they're, they're, ma they're maternity jeans, aren't they? They've got a whole fan pan panel that pulls this forward. The thing is, what I do, uh, at the end of the uh, week, I can pop these in the pan and I can make a nice suit with all the food <laughs> that's encrusted in them. At his years as a homeless coming to the floor there. Yeah. Look at you. But one what? step away from Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen. I'd like to be, I'd like to be that bit closer. <laughs> <laughs> but why are you dropping off tickets? Are you a little bit, because I, I thought you were married and stuff. Why do you suddenly got this obsession with Gervais? Because I'm a bit rough, ain't I? <laughs> I? Yeah. It's like when you see Dale Winton out with those rough boys, <laughs> I'd like to get one of my own. <laughs> when, when a top celebrity in a lovely looking suit drops, uh, walks down the corridor mm. with his penis out. Yes. Yeah. I know that I'm still you attracted. You know one. you've arrived. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was, I was in all in the same way. For me, it was Des O'Connor. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, it's the passing <laughs> under the baton, if I may use that euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you've been battened. But it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> well, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it, is, it is a pleasure. I don't think I'm complacent, just because I'm mixed with people like you. I still wake up and think, I don't believe it. I'm mates with Jono. Can I just oh, point out one I was listening to the show last week, and I heard you, as always, revealing a little too much about yourself, if you don't mind me saying so. Yeah. Steve Trump. Not as much as you! No, but that was just for the, for the benefit of the room. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And talking about when you used to occasionally urinate in the sink. Yeah. I was when you were around my house last time and I came <laughs> in <laughs> and you looked a bit shifty. <laughs> no, please reassure me. It no. was it was more ownership. But yeah. I was like, I went to my territory and I, then, yeah. then pe other people that come in that go, has Gervais been round here? It's like just marking my territory. Because my coffee the next morning had a hazelnut tank <laughs> to it that I don't remember putting in. Can but I just I, say something? Because I, I mean, I used to, I used to, you know, mention to you Gervais when we first started getting involved in the business. Yeah. I used to say, if there was one celebrity I'd like to be friends with, it's Jonathan Ross. Yeah. Lo and behold, Ricky's befriended Jonathan Ross. I'm nowhere to be seen. But Not Ricky invited round. Ricky told me that I could be his friend, providing I, n I never extended the arm of friendship. <laughs> right. Yeah. If you ever, I if thought as much. He tries I to keep everyone else down. He works with from the office, all the other shows. He, he yeah. tries to keep them down. He's yeah. I didn't even want to come in. I yeah, wanted yeah. to meet you on the steps. Yeah. I didn't even want to tell you you're around. <laughs> but you called. He went, "Who's that?" Yeah. And he saw your name come up, and he went, well, "Can I meet him?" Well, well you're no. you're coming tonight, though, aren't you? This isn't Radio Two, by the way. These links are way too long. This is snappy radio. We have to play. Yeah. You might be kids have lost interest. But the kids want to hear Coldplay, Cut a You know I like. How about some more of that instant? Forgettable hip hop you play. Each week. <laughs> one of those, <laughs> one of those obscure really hip hop who That's Thanks. the worst feature on British radio. You should be ashamed of yourself. Wait, Wait a minute, I've your quiz on Radio Two. Put it away. Put it away. I'm Carl. Carl, how you doing? Oh. All right. Got a question for you. Right, man. Got a question. Yeah. The Pope. Yeah. <laughs> what semi-precious stone does the Pope wear? That is easy. Go on. Topaz. Is that the right answer? I don't know, I might have wrote it down. <laughs> I'm, I'm really sorry, Jonathan. It's not, it's not what he publicly admits to, but I have to know, because I was hanging out with him <laughs> at the Groucho one night, and he was saying, oh, look at this, look at this, look at that toe bench, go and buy that, look at look that. Look at that. Vatican City. Look at that, we can make a nice ring out of yeah. that, he said. Didn't go anywhere, but thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> I better go, I've got to go, I've got to go and buy some winkle pickers. Thank you yeah. very much. Okay. Enjoy nice it. Yes. Carl, I wish I could say it had been a pleasure, thanks. but actually it was quite creepy. <laughs> 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 See you later. Thanks. You too. Beautiful day. Yep. Now, I was just saying that's probably one of my singles of the year, but was it this year or the year before? Oh, uh, crumbs, I don't know. It was, I think, was it 2000, the album? It was the first one off the album. Maybe that could be a question. <laughs> no, we need the answer, don't <laughs> well, we? We don't know the answer. No. We, oh, it's cool. Well, I just ask, um, jo uh, Jonathan Ross just came in there and to drop off some tickets for the comedy award show that he's hosting <laughs> yeah. later this evening. Yeah. Uh, interesting, of course, a man who's 40 and still thinks it's funny to get his penis out. <laughs> It is, though. I love that. I love, cause it's like, when's that, when's that novelty gonna wear off? 74, 75, <laughs> when it's just too horrible <laughs> exactly, to show in yeah. public, I imagine. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, so he dropped off some tickets for you. Yeah. Um, was asking you fashion advice last night. Yeah. Came, I mean, he came after a three-hour radio show he's just done on Radio 2. Good show, by the way, worth tuning in. <laughs> um, he came straight around yeah. here, dropped some tickets off for you. He's now got to go and rehearse that show. The lovely man. I was out with you last night. Yeah. Went into this, this pub, like, kind of, that we've been to a few times before. Went in there, and this guy came in and said, Your usual table, Ricky? <laughs> <laughs> Your usual table? Can I just ask you two questions, <laughs> uh, Godfather? <laughs> uh, one is... <laughs> Have we won an, a prize tonight? On I don't Mexican know. Wars? We genuinely two, don't know. Can you have someone iced for me? <laughs> 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 it's ludicrous. What have you suddenly got over all these people that they're doing all this way? When have you suddenly become the daddy? <laughs> well, I came from nowhere, and uh, you know, I, I've got I've got Polaroids of the head of all the right, stations. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Because what I'm worried about is that, like, when we're wrapped up in our winter coats, yeah. you're walking there in your little sort of you know little black overcoat, and I must look like your hood. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like your goon that walks with you. <laughs>
<laughs> twice as tall. Uh, very much like Edward G. Robinson. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You are one well, yeah. the pug face, obviously. Yeah. Well, don't go on about <laughs> it. Sorry. That's a bit freak. Like. All right. No, I don't know. You just well, that. It was a we've not. Been, even Jonathan Ross couldn't save this show. No. It is the only A celebrity I know. Yeah, I'm all it. out of ideas. I thought we'd have a trivia game. That's rubbish because he can't read or write. Yeah. And that's a, what is so it? So are we knocking the trivia game off? Yeah. Yeah. Should uh, we, well, let's have one final question. On, what What's the answer? answer? What, what I don't answer? know. I don't know. For the Pope one. Uh, I don't know. We couldn't even figure out the question, Carl. What's the stone? What's the stone? It. Oh. Hang on a minute. <laughs> Just don't, uh, entertain yourselves at home <laughs> while Carl looks for the, uh, question. Amethyst. 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 Yeah. Amethyst. <laughs> no, she was the first woman MP, I think you'll find. Amethyst. Rubby or Diamondo? Um, so have you got maybe a final question? That's still one on it. Okay, do it aside and then we knock this on the head. Yeah. Go on in. Where, what? <laughs> 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 Who? Uh, Have you not been practicing in all these? We've had ads, we've had music. <laughs> oh, where, what? Rick, I don't think we should call ITV later. Uh, but, but this. Maybe he was talking about Jonathan's inquiry about sartorial elegance tonight. Where, yes. what? Yeah. Maybe he's just like summed up that <laughs> yeah. conversation in What's just two. What's the most expensive pub in London? I think he won't know because he never pays. Hang on, wait a minute. What does that mean? How, how does, what does that mean? You want me to buy? I'll buy the pub. How much is that? It's a million pounds, no, sir. Like, if you go in, according to the Time Out Guide 2001, if you went in there and bought a big round, it's a deer pub. <laughs> <laughs> it's an expensive pub. Imagine this on Millionaire. Imagine that question well, on Mastermind. I know, your specialised subject, how, how much things are in that, <laughs> and that, and whether they make you fat when you eat them, then. It's in London. Is but, this like some guy went in the pub last night and thought, this is a bit pricey. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most expensive do, pub I've, I've ever been in. I'm gonna expose them <laughs> exactly. on Ricky and Steve's show. This, does it mean, like, maybe is it a pub or a club, maybe, where you've got no, to be a no, member? No, it's a pub. I'll narrow it down, it's in Covent Garden. Punch and Judy. That's it. it. Has he got it right? Yeah. Too well, right. I have to hand it to you. Well done. Yeah. So brilliant. So well who done. who was that? Who was that question from? Because maybe that they should get these three CDs. Let's let, let's let's give them that. Who is it, Carl? There's no way of verifying that. That's probably libelous. They probably He's made from the time out guide. Okay. All right. Carl, who what was it? What are you it? moaning for? You got it right. Yeah, I won. I won. Yeah. Carl. I won. Carl, who was it? The one. Well, listen, they know, so they've won. Yeah. Right. Stone. This is genius, Radio. This is brilliant. I tell you what's letting us down. Him. I know. KP the P man. When <laughs> he was just he was just doing the press <laughs> buttons and it was cool. Now we let him on the air because we thought it was funny. We quite like him. He's digging a grave for us. <laughs> right. Listen. This is a new feature I've introduced called Songs I'd Like to Play on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> And, um, oh, this is falling apart. And, uh, and a friend of mine sent me a little CD of, uh, little treats and stuff. Oh. And one of them is this track. It's, uh, called Monkey Man. It's from the Rolling Stones player, Carl. It's an absolute gem. XFM 104.9. What was that again, Steve? Rolling Stones and a track called Monkey Man. That's from a, a double CD. Not available in the shops. My friend Dave G made a compilation for me. Burned it onto CD using modern technology. That's one of the tracks on there. What's his name? What's his name? Dave Greenwood. Obviously breaking several, uh, copyright laws exactly. there. I would not encourage anyone to make copies of anything for anyone. It's breaking his the law. His name again if the police are listening? Dave Greenwood lives in Nottingham. I can How do dare he do that I, for you? Sickens me, Rick. He's making you receive, you know, stolen goods. Yeah, and there are various artists on there who've barely got a penny, who are losing money hand over fist. The Rolling Stones, for instance. Yeah, the and Doors. XFM have done that as well, played off it, you know, and that's terrible. Now we've implicated those as well. XFM are uh, culpable. Um, so is Dave G. Thankfully, not us, Rick. No, we're just middlemen caught up in it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, if Mr. Biggs behind it. There's always Mr. Just Biggs. Just pawns in his game. And, um, <coughs> so that's, uh, I'll be playing another track from that, uh, well, uh, later on. I've got a lovely couple of little tracks on my hip-hop selection. Looking forward to it. Uh, is it's it like, can I just ask did Mama you get, uh, you did you get a, um, little gift here from XFM? I did. Um, I got a lovely little voucher here. It was very nice. Yeah, very thoughtful. I've also got one. How much is yours for? Twenty-five pounds. To spend at John Lewis or Waitrose. Yeah. A little, uh, kind of gift voucher there. Oh, I think I'd, oh, I think I'd do, uh, Waitrose, because food, you can get a good lot of food for twenty-five quid. Absolutely right. You can't get a lot of, like, haberdashery for <laughs> twenty-five quid. So I'll <laughs> be going about, the food option. The thing about the gift voucher, a lot of people were, re I'm sure, receiving these over the Christmas sure. period. The thing about the gift voucher is it's like, it, it's like, here's 25 pounds, yeah. but I've limited where you can yeah. spend it. It's, it's like, it's like, they don't want to give money because that's go. Say, this is like money, but not as versatile. Exactly. You can't spend it in as many places. And, but it's the thing is that, surely the thing about a gift is, you know, you don't want people to know how much it was. And, unless you're letting them make their, buck their ideas up for next year. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? If an aunt gives you, like, uh, you know, a single, like a step single, and you've given her 25 quid at the body shop, yeah. you're saying, you know how much that single costs, exactly. so do I, I'm not yeah. gonna say, right? Yeah. Let's make up the difference next year, sorry, exactly. aren't we? You know exactly. what I mean? Let's spend 50 quid on me next year. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how much he got? 
How much do you get? Did you get a gift voucher as well? Yeah, but I work here all week. Right. How much do you get? 150. 150 quid? Yeah. What, on gift vouchers? Yeah. To spend at the same places? Mm. I'd have to say, though, <laughs> I mean, it's not a very inventive gift, is it? It's Whoever a came up thought, with it, though. It's a lovely thought. It's wonderful to have 25 pounds that I can, I can only spend in two places I never go in. But, uh, no, no, I'm not, Steve, I'm not looking a gift horse in the mouth. Any I'm not anyway. looking a gift horse in the mouth. It he, is a treat. He, My sp he spoke to Jonathan Ross like he was a normal person. Uh, from someone whose dad buys him a spade for Christmas, I thought you'd be grateful. <laughs> My only thought is that John Lewis and Waitrose, I mean, it's not very rock and roll, it's not very XFM, is it? No, I mean, a tattoo parlour, yeah, maybe, you know, in a bike a shop. piercing, I might get my face pierced, just a big <laughs> exactly. bolt through my head. But yeah. I mean, they're a little bit, aren't they a little bit like the man? Aren't they a little bit mainstream? Yeah. Right? Hey? What would Billy we say about roll? this? I'll play a record, and don't make it a square record, <laughs> some on an indie label or something, or something that hasn't been even recorded. <laughs> yeah, that can't even become available yeah, ever. Yeah, I don't know what instruments they're playing. Oh, not the guitar. Some 41. In too deep. All right, Steve? Mm -hmm. It's been a long time. Eh? Isn't it? What has like, like, That seemed a long time, all that music. We've yes, made. no, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, it's annoying, actually, that Carl never went to the email, because the questions have been sent in there. Good, good questions. And they've all been, uh, sort of neatly spat out with the correct answer. For instance, I might have asked you this, if I was the quiz master, Rick. How many noses do slugs have? Oh, I think, it's, I think it's four. It is four? Yeah. Point to you there. Let me just see if I can find another one. Who, according to the current issue of Viz, is a cycloptic pop temptress? Oh, don't know. Is it a pun on her having one eye and being yep. sounding like? Cycloptic is the clue. There's yeah. only one pop temptress. Oh, it's um Gabrielle. Of course. Yeah. It's two points. Fine, a battery didn't get them. These are these are rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever watched a question? Because I can understand the question. They're rubbish. I suppose, aren't they? That gives me a chance to know what, what the answer is required. Go on. Uh, let me see if I can find another one for you. Uh, no, that's, you're never gonna get that one, that's too hard. Oh, no, no that, that just, that just... That just teases you more, yeah. isn't it? Uh, what's the name of... No, that's boring, that one. Sorry. Hey, it's, it's beginning to fall apart again now. Uh, here we are. What's the proper name for Big Ben? Is it St. Stephen's Tower? You know, it absolutely yeah. is. That's three out of three. That's fantastic. Yeah, because it the bow, the, named after something like Benjamin so-and-so works in it, and St. Stephen's Tower needs that's the big bow. It's actually, in a weird way, I didn't know any of those, so it's actually quite good that we did kind of balls it up with Carl, because otherwise I'd have, there'd have been egg on my face. Yeah, but I still won, I just won less. Oh, did you? Yeah, you did win. Yeah. 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 I've <laughs> already forgotten, I already wiped that out of my memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, uh, but, hey, Steve, it's not me that's the real winner. <laughs> it's Neil. Who uh, asked that question about pubs? About pubs, he and he's got those three CDs. Just tell him what they are again. Just Feeder Echo Park, a compilation called Reloaded Three. Lots of great stuff on there, and the Essential Bob Dylan two CD. Have set. you called him and told him? No, not yet. This is such a shambles, isn't it? Because what if he goes out or something? <laughs> Actually, if he's listening, can he give us a call? That is so lazy. Can't we call him like Tarrant would? I would have got his number. Him. You've not got his number. I forgot. Carl, oh, this is unbelievable. I said get the numbers, Carl. I I wanted to go for the Pope one. Carl, do you actually work here in the week? <laughs> or, like, did you just, <laughs> you know like in a film when they knock someone on the head, <laughs> put on the space suit and go to the yeah. room uh, is instead? It like, is, yeah, is it like Secret of My Success and Michael J. Fox? You actually work in the post room, <laughs> but Saturdays there's no one around that recognises you. So you pretend that you're a producer? Yeah. Because you don't yeah. seem to know any of the rules. Because I reckon that name's made up. When did uh, I say a producer? <laughs> when did I say a yeah, Carl Pinkerton is a name that you'd come up with on the spot. No, he doesn't work it. No, he's not a producer. He says he works in sound. He works That's what in he sound. Says, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, well, work with this. This is my song for the lovers. It's a beautiful track. I've played it before. I'll play it again. It's one of my favourite tracks of all time. It's Bob Dylan, If You See Her, Say Hello. It's a little bit of trivia for her. This is the last song I ever played on the old XFM before wow. they came in and said, okay, you can go now. That's incredible. Isn't it? Bringing tears to my eyes. Lovely. Well, the greatest singer-songwriter of all time. Beautiful. With one of his, uh, best songs there. Absolutely. Bob Dylan, if you see her, say hello. She might be in Tangiers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's, he's having a go. He's, I he, mean, if you're gonna go to Tangiers on the off chance to <laughs> yeah, try and find her, I yeah. wouldn't bother. Yeah. You know? But I mean, you know, he's thinking, if you're gonna be there, then He's have desperate, he's desperate. He's going, yeah. well, she might be in Tangiers. Uh, have you checked upstairs? She's definitely not upstairs. <laughs> just, just have a look. Well, anyway, that was Song for the Lovers, but... Because I'm so excited about having such great prizes to give away for the first time, some albums that <laughs> Carl found, um, got we've got the lucky winner on the line. Hi, Neil, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Ricky. Hi. You're a winner with XFM. <laughs> Fantastic! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you, do you like Feeder? They're a good group, aren't they? Feeder, they well, yeah, the kids seem to like them. They do, the kids like them, and then Bob Dylan, uh, he's a, he's a great, um, lovely bloke with a guitar, isn't he? <laughs> You're working hard, aren't you? I'm, I'm, I'm fed up with this, mate. <laughs> really? Honestly, I just don't know what else to do. I'd I come in every week. I'd try, uh, try yeah, and right. 
Yeah. You have to write a new series of, uh, of The Office. I'm That's what you have to do. I'm trying, but I've got a voiceover work now, so there's more yeah, money in that, you know. You're everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Willie's advert. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't mention that, shouldn't I? No, it's all right. It's so, all right. uh, Neil, uh, Steve Merchant here. Uh, Thank will you, you be looking forward to receiving these albums? You've got Feeder, Echo Park, uh, Bob Dylan album, The Best Of, and, uh, a compilation. You looking forward to them? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, I, I mean, it's gonna really lift my Christmas, uh, hall. I'm not gonna get, not gonna get to your home this year, so that's gonna make up for it, I'm sure. Neil, what, what, are, what are those three? Which one will you be putting on first? I think Feeder Echo Park, because the kids seem to like it. Okay. Excellent. Thanks very much, What are you going to be doing for the rest of the weekend? Are you going to be chilling out? <laughs> I'm chilling, man. I'm freezing. I'm playing golf right now. It's, uh, That's it's madness. Very, it's very cold yeah. out here. What's well, your handicap? What's my handicap? My short game's terrible, but... Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're going to be watching the uh, National Comedy Awards this evening. I hear that The Office uh, <laughs> is nominated. Ah, you guys are the shoe-in. Sorry? Yeah. You're, the, you're a shoe-in. It's yours. Thank no, you. I really don't know what a shoe in is, but I'd like to go to one. I think it means like um foot yeah. in the door. Lovely. Yeah, Does no, it? not foot in the door. It's like it's no. yours. Your name's already on it. Oh, really? Wow. I would think so. Yeah. Well, other, wh wh why would Ross stop around? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he makes the decisions. Neil, but... thanks very much for calling. Those uh, those uh, players are going to be winging their way to you. We're just like real DJs, aren't we, Neil? Just say we're just like real DJs, and we will leave you alone. You guys are just like real DJs. Thanks Enjoy your game. Well. Cheers. Bye. Step on my old size nine stereophonics. Absolutely. Well, talking to Neil, it all brought it home. You know, maybe I should give it a little bit back. Yeah, uh, you've I'm, had a good year. I'm hanging out with Jonathan Ross. Exactly. I'm doing ads, yeah. right? But I care. I'm still in touch. You know what I mean? I'm still down with it, yeah, right? Yeah. And, you know, it's coming up to the time of year where we should, you know, care about people less fortunate than themselves. And what I've done, I've recorded a, a, a Christmas single. That's beautiful. And all proceeds are going, you know, to, uh, you know, little sick people and that and... Are there gonna be any proceeds? There's gonna be not a sausage. <laughs> right. So I'm right. safe. But I'll tell you this, what I was thinking actually, I was listening this morning, and you go in, uh, doing some Christmas shopping, you go in the shops, and there's always, you know, walking in a winter wonderland, and all those songs. You know, no one writes those sort of things anymore. No. Uh, it, it, well, you're wrong, Steve. Really? Listen to this. It's What's called it called? Don't Cry, It's Christmas. Let's hear it. Don't you cry, my baby. Santa's coming soon. Though you ain't got a mommy or daddy, Santa still loves you. And he's riding on his reindeer to trample down the gloom. So don't cry, my baby. Santa, gonna make it soon. Don't cry. My baby, Santa's feeling kind Though you know you never see him He's not just in your mind And it's not that he's invisible It's because you're going blind So don't cry, it's Christmas Santa's still on time my baby Santa's on his way You know he's got six billion children And he's only got one day You've got slightly less than that If I were you, i pray So don't cry It's Christmas You're nearly ten It's a little gay Do you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's already become a standard. One of the classics. Thanks. <laughs> There's a star. Ash. Good. It's a great show so far, isn't it? Enjoying it, Rick, but I'll tell you this, what worries me Go is on. something we've not done, which is what we've not- we've not taken on board some stuff I've heard from the management. They've said they've enjoyed the kind of light-hearted flippery, you know, yeah. in the past on the yeah. show, and, yeah. uh, yeah. you know, the likes of Jonathan Ross getting just, their just knobs out. Yeah. But, uh, they just feel that- sometimes it's a little bit cheap. Rick, no, a little bit what, crass, and they just want us way? to perhaps be a little bit more highbrow at times, a little well, bit more because I mean, Well, you're a smart yeah. guy, I, I, I am, yeah. Know. Well, you've, I've proved that with clugs having four noses and Stephen's Tower. Can I ask you, Rick, about politics? What do you want to know? What do you want to know? Because I'm, I'm a political person. <laughs> I thought this much. Go on. What on the politics? What do you make of who to vote for? Vote for the government, whoever's in the government. Yeah. That's the it. Liberals ever? No, not if they're not in government, no, okay. don't. What about the foot and mouth, which a lot of people have worried about? Don't worry about it. No? No. Recession is hit, and a lot of people are losing their jobs. Should yeah. they- what should they do about Get it? Get another one. Get, Get another, another job. job. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, this is- and this is 
I mean, you can have this for free. If you do lose your job or something, get another one, but get one that's even better than the one you lost. Right. <laughs> okay, good advice. Yeah. Maybe get, maybe, if you were just like kind of the post boy before, like Carl. Get a, be in charge of the company, get a manager's job. Right, become director general or something. More money. <laughs> good, 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 good. And oh. don't lose that one. <laughs> okay. And, um, oh, what else is concerning people? No, a lot of, we get calls all the time, Rick, to the yeah. station. People saying, I'm worried about the war in Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you make of the war? Is it, is, or, or, it, is well, it one of your favourites? Well, what if I, no, 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 my favourite, all war's bad, uh, but, uh, oh, my favourite. Uh, I'm putting you on the spot here. What Falklands. is your favourite? Is it really? Yeah, yeah. Is it? The Falklands it, War? It was a range war. What does that mean? Do you know what that means, Carl? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I remember drawing pictures at school and that. Yeah. It, it means that our missiles could go sort of 17 kilometres, yeah. and the Argus only had missiles that go like, you know, 9 kilometres. So we just parked our boats about 12, 13 kilometres off it, and we were shelling them. You know, I mean, yeah. shelling it out of there, right? And theirs were falling in the water. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it's the war equivalent of holding a midget at arm's length. Right, and he's trying to punch you. And he can't reach yeah. him, you're just kicking him in the balls at <laughs> <and> will. <laughs> that was, uh, Rick, a lot of people talk about WW1 as being the Great War. Was it a Great War for no, you? No, it was a good war. It wasn't a Great War. Right. <laughs> what was the problem well, for Well, I you? liked all the, I liked the bayonets and the trenches and all that stuff, but I could have done without the poetry. Right. <laughs> only, only because the poetry's a little bit bent. <laughs> okay. And, you know, and what I'm saying is the only time that it isn't bent in a war but, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's beautiful, but there's one now I remember, it was, um, we are the dead, once we lived, felt dawn on our face, but now we lie in Flanders fields. Be honest, if you'd have had a gun in your hand instead of a pen, yeah. you might be lying today, be dead, yeah. and the war yeah. would have been over by Christmas. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> High five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so that's losers. politics, Carl. Any other questions, politics Carl, you want to solve you know, any high- Economics, I've done economics. Cause yeah, it's the economical. I Anything just, else? I just think you should look after yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> Oh, I've That's just got something right. to say to you. Hip hop, hooray! Hey. Let's play my hip hop track. Whoa. Hey. <laughs> Put Whoa. your hands in the air. Yay. Move them round like you just don't care. Yeah, you're not even bothered. <laughs> I'm playing an old school track this week, Rick. Excellent. I'm going back in time, rewinding the track. How are you spelling school, Steve? <laughs> oh, with a K. Go on. Uh, ever heard of anything by Digital Underground? The Humpty Dance, might you might The remember. Humpty Dance. Do you remember that? That was, um, a fellow who sat on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. And he was, he was getting dissed by yeah. the police and he fell and he broke all up and the king's horses shouldn't have really been sent to, to repair an egg. <laughs> they couldn't do it because of their hooves. <laughs> uh, anyway, Digital Underground, for those that don't remember, was an Oakland group led by Shock G and Chop Master J. Go on. <laughs> uh, but of course, most famous now for the fact that they featured, uh, Tupac Shakur. Love him. Where he first began. You'll hear him on this track. It's called, uh, what's that, which one have I chosen here? I think it's called the same song. Have a listen. <laughs> Ross was uh, slagging off the hip hop feature, wasn't he, when he came in earlier? And how can you not like that? Digital Underground, same I, song. I think he was scared of it, Steve. I think he was intimidated. Doesn't understand it by your by your youth. Well, he's scared of the youth. He's scared of the fact that I'm down with it. The homers and the bitches and the hoes. Yeah, he, yeah. Because he, he's not with that. You I know, he looks dapper. If they saw him in the street walking down like a ponce, they'd just laugh and jeer. But yeah. Probably rhythmically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know, and he couldn't come back at anything. And you'd be high fiving. Oh, they'd, they'd be loving, loving me. you. I, th I think he was intimidated by your style. I think he's jealous of you, to be honest. Do you know, I think what he's probably most jealous of is the looks. <laughs> yeah, I think Do you so. know what I mean? Yeah. I got the new haircut, because we might be on the telly later. He didn't mention that, did he? Didn't, did he? Well, he's never seen the old one. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've kept him from me. <laughs> <laughs> he's got nothing to compare it to. <laughs> but that was a great hip-hop selection there. Yeah, lovely. Even lovely though thing. I say so yourself. Rick, we've had a couple of people, because uh, they've, they've listened to your dissection of current politics and ep economicals. Yeah. And they've got a couple of questions for you. Go on. We've had one from, uh, uh Jimmy Ruffin. He says, uh, what becomes of the broken hearted? Oh, oh, oh dear. Um, that is a difficult one. I don't think I've got time to go into that, because it's not? a very, it's a very <laughs> delicate problem. Can you answer this one from the KLF? What time is love? <laughs> Any ideas? <laughs> Listen, keep those questions coming in, uh, for Ricky uh, Jones, you may be able to <laughs> sort them out later. Have we got a song today, Carl? Uh, yeah. let's, let's oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> Still to come, song for the It's not the end of the world. <laughs> Super furry animals. Absolutely beautiful. No. XFM 104.9. Rick, you gonna do your film review for us? We've got time for it, I think. I'm not, no. Why not? I'm not gonna do it anymore. You're not gonna do it anymore? No. You love it, don't you? No, it's great, and I just think it's time, you know, I did, I did a dozen, but I did all the, do all the films that I would give like nine or, you know, ten out of ten for. I don't want to drop the standards. Right. I don't want to start doing films that are eight out of ten. Yeah. You see? Yeah. That's where a lot of film reviewers go wrong. Yeah, Ross I've being one of them. Yeah, I've seen yeah. them go, oh, this is worth seven. Don't do it then. <laughs> yeah. If it's no good, don't do <laughs> it. No worries yourself. No!
Sure. So, so no more film reviews? No. Oh. In, until a great film comes out. Sure, okay. Like, uh, Braveheart 2 or something. <laughs> yeah. Which would be, which would be, well, 9 now. Quite it an was, eventful. Yeah. I'd have thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So 9 for that. Um, In well, advance. Rick, <laughs> it's almost the end of the show, and yeah. still got time for the uh, song for the ladies. I can't but wait. Carl won't be here next week. Well, where's he going? Where are you heading, Carl? Going away for Christmas? Tell us. What? It's a secret. What you want? You, 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 <laughs> what, in case, in case your fans try and track you down. What? Are you going taking pictures of planes in Greece? <laughs> what? What? Political? Rob your house. Satirical, don't Steve. <laughs> Satirical. <laughs> Where are yeah. you going? What are you doing? If uh, I tell you what. If I was caught in a foreign country and the, and and the government got me and said no it's okay they were train spotting or plane spotting I go no I am a spy <laughs> exactly no I am a spy no you were it's all right you were train spotting <laughs> but I wasn't <laughs> wasn't spying please I saw you at the uh, Doctor Who convention as well no no problem no, probably an assassin <laughs> or something <laughs> yeah. I'm probably an assassin Carl where are you going mate tell us come you, on no, we haven't got time to say when. What's that, are you? What? People rob your house if- Yeah. We didn't say tell us your address, <laughs> where, tell us where you leave the key, <laughs> and yeah. then tell us you're going on holiday. We said where you're going on a holiday. Barbados. Oh yeah? Ooh. Showing off. Yeah. Boasting. I'll tell you what, Steve, what I'd like to see, and a lot of the listeners right there too, pop round there now, touch him for Christmas. Shall I touch him for Christmas? Touch him any way you like for Christmas. Can love I just him introduce the song for the ladies before? Well, love him for Christmas, though. <laughs> Can I just say, yes, uh, what but as long as you love and touch him. We're gonna leave you with, uh, the excellent Tim Buckley, of course, father of Jeff. I'm and, just gonna be uh, watching, but love him for Christmas. Look at his little face. Also on that CD that my friend Dave sent me earlier, so if you don't like it, blame him. Yeah. Uh, while he's been arrested if... by the copyright police. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's called Buzzin' Fly. Let me touch you, Carl. Oh, Steve. Uh, Go on. Man for Christmas. I'm not kissing a man. Licking a man for Christmas. Oh, look. I can touch with your feminine side of town. Get off! I can put you in touch with your feminine side And my feminine side. I'm liking it. So I can't look, I'm busy. Look, I'm busy. Oh, good.